Hi, it's Nancy L.T. Hamilton, and today I make up for you wire stuff. Mmm. You're going to love it. Anyway, uh, you ever want to make a pin stem or need a graduated wire for um, maybe making some flowers and a stem? There's a million other things that I cannot think of at the moment, but I do have a brooch here that does have a graduated wire on here and I'm going to show you two methods to make graduated wire but there's more we're going to be doing I'm going to we're going to be doing I'm going to be doing and showing you how to draw down wire using um, the uh, draw thingy that I just forgot the name of it draw bench draw bench and also just using a vise and a draw plate to, you know, like when you get 20 gauge wire and, oh my God, I really need 22 and I don't have any and it's going to take two days to get here. I'll show you how to make 22 gauge wire from your 20 gauge. So that's what we're going to do today. Get ready. Start your engines. So this version of the um, graduated wire that I'm going to show you it involves forging um, with hammers and a steel block. Um, we're basically, what we're doing is thinning the metal down to a point and we're going to try to do it in a uh, even fashion so that it's not one side's flat and the other side's rounded so you want your metal to be uh, very straight and then anneal it and then come back to um, the hammering part because we're going to need to anneal this often too so that we don't get um, if you hammer too much without annealing it makes this like little flaps and and they break off and they get brittle and they can crack and there's all kinds of terrible, terrible things that can happen. So we're going to hammer a little bit, kneel, hammer a little bit, kneel. Okay. Okay. So um, I'm going to start. Um, the, your hammer should have a nice shiny finish on it because whatever is on your hammer is going to be transferred to your metal. This doesn't look beautiful, but it's not bad. It actually needs a little mending. And I'm just using this, uh, what is this, a raising hammer? You can use any kind, basically. And I'm going to start from about back here, and I'm going to start pushing the metal up to the point. And I'm rolling it like this. It's one of the reasons you want it straight, so it makes it easier to roll. So I'm going to start moving it up. I want to do the hammer blows close together. So you can see that in the comparison, this is not tapered and this is, the taper is starting to develop. Um, so at this point, I'm going to go anneal it again and um, we'll continue to work this down in this direction to thin it. Um, I did want to mention the reason I chose that heavier hammer was because it requires less work to move the metal in the initial phases. We're going to be switching to a planishing hammer after um, I get the sh length and um, shape I want. So I'm going to go kneel. So now we're getting the shape of the uh, graduated wire a little more fine-tuned and I'm not going to be hammering as far back as when I first started. I'm going to start working middle to tip at this point. Okay, so I'm just going to do that for a minute and then I'm going to go anneal it. You try to you want to look for spots that haven't been hammered and little flat areas. Try to round them out. See, I'm working the tip a little more at this point. So at this, I would go kneel this now, and um, I'm going to probably do another course without you watching. And then we'll talk about the last step on this and then the planishing of this and sanding and we'll be done with this part. <laughs> so you can see the taper is getting more pronounced. Um, I'm switched to this heavier planishing hammer. This frets one is probably what I'm going to use as my final because it's got a really nice polish on it. It's a lighter hammer. But um, at this point, I want to put more of... Uh, more of a fine point on this, especially if you're going to use it for a pin back or something. So we're going to pretty much work from this area forward and concentrate in your head. Think 
I'm making a really fine point. I'm making a really fine point. It'll help guide you and visually in your brain on what you want to make and see. And the harder you hit this, the faster this goes. If you're a tapper, it's going to take longer than if you're a pounder. But pounders, you don't want to get too hard because you could flatten it and then you would have a harder time getting it back into round again. So somewhere between pounding and tapping. Pull that tip forward. Back here, pull that metal. So I'm going to check, make sure I don't have square tips. So I want to keep that point nice and sharp. Okay, so it's probably time for me to go anneal again. Uh, so I'm going to probably do another course or two and then I'll come back and we'll show you with the uh, real shiny planishing hammer and we'll be done with this part. So I'm <clears throat> at a point where I'm going to say that I have a sufficient um, uh, taper on this and you can see the difference between the two uh, as far as gauge. I'll measure it afterwards to see what we went from to what we went to. Um, so now I'm going to just switch to my little uh, planishing hammer here and kind of clean the whole thing up a little bit. And then I'm going to switch to um, my sanding discs. But I'm going to save that to show you um, using the rolling mill method so we don't have to repeat it twice, okay? So I'm just going to continue to planish. And I'm smoothing the, trying to smooth the metal down so there's a minimal amount of bumps and flat spots so there's less work I have to do when I'm sanding. So you can go back and take your nap now. So here we are at Ye old Rolling Mill for the second method of creating tapered wire. This takes a lot less time. Um, the things you have to watch out for is that it can flatten on one side and be very hard to flatten on the other side. Um, it's just one of those things you just have to try to keep pulling and fighting it because it wants to flop back onto the flat side but we're going to switch our angle up so that you can see what's happening here from behind as closely as we can possibly pull it off um, briefly what i'm going to do is i opened the rolling mill up so that i could fit the wire in and then tighten it down just so that it catches and then i'm going to open it a tiny bit and pull it out so and then tighten down just a little bit so it's slightly tighter than holding it in place. And that's going to be our first roll. And you decide where you want your taper to start. So I'm going to start about midway on this one. And so I will put this part in and roll the whole thing through once in this direction, once in this direction, and maybe once or twice more. And then I'll have to anneal it. So that's what I'm going to do now. And um, we'll switch the angle in a minute. Uh, for the first part, we're not going to do that. So. Right now I'm just going to start. So I'm going to roll it through. It shouldn't be really hard to do it. And then flip it on its side and roll it through again. And then you can give it another tighten down and do the same thing. Roll it through. And these are incremental small uh, tightening downs. So I'm kind of just half turning it, I mean quarter turning it to be able to start it. So here we are. We're starting the, the um, I don't know why I can't remember that word today, tapering. So I'm going to straighten this out a little bit with a hammer. I want to try to keep it as straight as possible and I'm going to go kneel it. Okay. So um, it's annealed. I'm tightening it down a little more. I'm going to run it through. This is really fun with Lisa back here because she's trying to fit into a tiny corner. Now, see, I've got a, I don't know if you can see it, but I've got a flat edge there that I'm going to try to roll down. Wait, is it that side or that side? Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's really tight, you guys. You should see this. It's pretty funny. And one more time. Now, after I anneal this, um, I'm going to um, stop rolling from midway and start rolling from like about here up. Okay, 
we go in and out. Check it and see where to put it through. Come on, it wants to lay on its side. Tighten it down a little more. Oh, it really wants to go on its side. I can pull it with all my might to keep it from doing so. <laughs> So we're starting to get in the shape of the taper. Now I'm going to start working closer to the tip. And I'm just kind of giving it a, I don't know, quarter of a swing here. It's starting to get smaller. Come on, it's trying to flatten down on me again. Okay, see so we're starting to get the graduation on it and um, what I'm going to do after I take this down just a little bit more is use the um, planishing hammers to round up all these edges here and then we'll, we'll do that. Okay, I'm just going to pretty much work on the tip area here and turn it a lot. goofy on me. If it does get really flat and it's really hard to keep in the rolling mill, um, I go ahead and use your hammer, planishing hammer or whatever. This is feeling like it's getting close to needing a little hammering. Come on. And you can see it's a little wider here than it is over here, so I'm going to try to put it in without it twisting, but you have to resort to pulling out the hammer on the tip here, so. <laughs> it's the handle of the rolling mill. Whoops. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go kneel this, and then we're going to meet back over at my um, steel block, if I can get this back on. So, um, the one that we planished is a lot smoother and will take less sanding to clean up. But with these sanding discs, it doesn't take long. I'm using a rough one here and putting it into a bench pin and turning it so that I can get an even uh, clean up on it. So you're just rounding up any um, unround edges. Putting your point on. Okay. And then um, I'll switch to um, my medium disc. You don't have to watch this whole thing. I just wanted to briefly run through it. You can do this with steel and stainless steel wire too for ba uh, pin back. Preferably stainless steel on the pin back. And you're just going to basically go through and use the graduating, um, hi, <laughs> safety Nancy, um, use your graduated disc down to, you know, your finest one until you achieve the finish that you want. And uh, that's that on that. And we're going to start uh, doing the whew, drawing wire. Oh, there's my hair. No longer fabulous. Um, we're going to do drawing wire next. I cool down. So now we're on the drawing wire part. I'll say that slowly so you can understand me. Drawing wire part. Um, and you do need a taper on this, but not as extensive uh, of a taper as we put on the other wire. So this one, I'm smiling. I'm trying to smile more in my videos. <laughs> I look insipid. Um, you can use a sanding disc, and I would, I would uh, graduate at about 10 millimeters muscle manos on the wire so about that far is good and you don't need a huge taper on it but you what I'll, I'm not going to tell you I'll show you later you can also if you are fortunate enough to have one of my favorite tools is the wolf belt sander um, you can do this I'll actually work down here
and cut your taper that way, which is a lot faster, but it gets hot, so you got to watch the fingertips. So this is ready to be drawn through. It's been annealed, um, and I will meet you over, uh, where do we want to go? Belize. Let's go to Belize. See you in Belize. So the first thing, see I'm smiling again. The first thing you want to do is, and not well, after you've nailed and pointed, is to put uh, a lubricant on them. You're going to use Bare Life, liquid Bare Life. Um, this draw plate I have is filled with beeswax because that's what I used to use, but this is nice because it doesn't clog up the draw plate, which is what this is. And when you use the draw plate, you don't want to put the wire through on this. This thing is scary, putting it down. Um, you don't want to use start it on this side. This is the back of the things. You see all that gunky beeswax. So what you want to do is find the hole that the wire fits the tightest in. So I can't push it through anymore and it's just our tapered part coming out. So I'm going to clamp this thing in here well. And these are called draw tongs. They have a cheaper pair than this. I think it's like 16, 17 bucks at Old Rio. Grande. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this tip here and I'm going to brace myself so when it comes through I don't fall backwards. So you want a really good center of gravity and then you're going to just yank it through like that. So now we have our first pull um, and this wire I actually wrote it down so that we'll compare later uh, how many times it takes us. I can probably pull it one more time but I'm going to recoat with um, the liquid bar life. Okay, we were in 16 before, right? Where the heck did it go? We weren't in 16. Were we in 16? Oh my god. Okay, so we must have been in 16. So now I gotta go. No, not 17. 18. Go 18. Go 18! And same thing. I'm only going to do this twice before I anneal. There we go. So now I'm going to go anneal this. Um, what usually happens if you're really pulling down a lot of wire is this ends up getting mangled and breaks off on you. So don't be surprised if you have to re-tip uh, this thing. So I'm going to anneal it and uh, draw it down a little more. Smiling. Kind of. <laughs> Okay, so now um, I stopped using the draw plate in the vise because I wanted to show you how what how a um, draw bench works. This is a tabletop draw bench. For some reason they're really hard to find now. I only found one person that's selling them, and it's like twice what I paid for this. But this is nice because I can stack it in the corner, and I don't have to have this giant draw bench in my studio. Um, so the parts are you've got this kind of roller cranky thing here. You got your draw tongs. Use your draw plate and our little wire back here. Um, when I start, I let out some line so that it reaches with a little excess down to the end, like that. And you want to put your draw plate in with the holes, the front side of the draw plate facing forward. It goes in these little slotty things here. And you also want to lubricate your wire like we did um, with the other technique. Same technique, different tools. So there, that's lubricated. And um, that's how you set it up. Okay, so now what we want to do is grab hold of our tip there with our draw tongs. And I kind of move the bar, try to make it more centered um, in, the in the tool. And now I'm just going to crank. And it's, I'm going to keep this, my hands here because I'm holding the pliers shut and you just pull through. Now this is really great when you're pulling a lot of wire or when you're pulling really heavy wire because you don't have to rely on um, your brute strength or lack thereof. Oh, let it go one, one more time. By the way, the two pulls through on uh, just the draw plate in the vise uh, brought it from a, a 16 to a 17 almost 17 gauge so it's going to take a few pulls if you want to get it down to 22. I'll have to check and see what this is after. So basically that's that um, on 
drawing drawing wire. Oh, another good thing about using the bench top or the draw. Uh, oh my God, I'm so dense sometimes. Draw bench is that you can point tubing through it is a lot easier too and uh, I'm not going to show you how to do that today because we've already babbled on too long again but um, it makes it a lot easier I I kept falling on the floor <laughs> when I was pulling it wire and tubing through the vise and I figured this the cost of this was worth saving my spine from any more damage than it already has so that's why I bought this uh, I don't use it that often but when I do I'm very happy I have it so all right, so, smile, shut up. <laughs> Thanks for coming. This is Nancy LT Hamilton saying, don't forget to subscribe. Otherwise, I just won't feel wanted. And God, I'm needy. Um, and also, just keep watching. Go visit my website, Nancy. That's my email, nancyltHamilton.com. And you can email me at nancy.lt.hamilton at gmail.com. Sayonara! Wait, I'm asking her that. <laughs>